For this problem, we're given a graph and we're asked to analyze this graph, beginning with the domain and the range. So remember, domain is asking for the set of all the possible x values or the input values, and that means we're looking at the graph from left to right. So what's the farthest point to the left on the graph and the farthest point to the right on the graph? And in this case, because of this arrow on the left-hand side, this shows that the graph is going down, but it's also going to the left forever. So our domain is going to be from negative infinity. And this is a nice, smooth, continuous graph. There's no breaks. And you'll notice the right-hand side, the arrow is also pointing down, but that indicates it's also going to the right. So that would be from negative to positive infinity for our domain. And if you want to get a little bit more accurate with the notation, you could write x is an element of this interval. So x can be any real number. Likewise, for range, we're looking at the lowest to the highest point on the graph, all of the possible y values. So these arrows indicate that the graph is going down forever, so that would be negative infinity. And then the highest point on the graph is this point up here, and the y value there is about 9.6. So we'll say from negative infinity to 9.6. And then this point is included on the graph. The graph touches at that y value 9.6. So we'll utilize a bracket to include the value. And again, you could write y is an element of that interval if you wanted to. Now for the zeros, remember that the zeros in this case are the x-intercepts for this particular graph. So where the graph crosses the x-axis and there are four of them. So you can just list, list the zeros. The zeros are gonna be negative seven, comma negative one, comma 1, and comma 5. Next, we're interested in where the graph is increasing and decreasing. So the graph is increasing when the y values are getting larger. And we read the graph, remember, from left to right. So if I start on the leftmost part of the graph and I travel from left to right, I'd be traveling this direction. And here you can see that my y values are getting larger, so my function is increasing for this interval. And when you give the answers for increasing, you're going to give the, the x intervals. So we would say that the function is increasing for all values of x in the interval negative infinity to this high point here, that's where the graph changes to decreasing, and the x value at that point is about negative 5. So we'll say the graph increases from negative infinity to negative 5. And then you'll notice as we continue from left to right, now for this next part of the graph, my y values are getting smaller. So this would be a decreasing portion of the graph. So we're decreasing from negative 5 to the x value of this point here, which if you rounded, you could say this is pretty close to 0. I made this graph on my graphing calculator. That's why I have these decimals. So I'm going to go ahead and, and include some of the decimals. So the graph is decreasing um, on the interval from negative 5, approximately, to, I'll write, negative 0.03. I'll round that to two decimals. And then keep going from left to right. You'll see that my next portion, the y values, let's try that again. For my next portion of the graph, the y values now are getting larger, so now we're increasing again. So increasing from negative 0 0.03 to about 3.57. So we'll union this with the next interval, negative 0 0.03 to about 3.57 or 3.6 if you round it. And then lastly, we, we decrease one more time. So now my y values are getting smaller, so now we're decreasing from that 3.57, and then we continue. Remember that arrow is pointing not just down, but it's also pointing to the right. This is moving to the right as well, so we would decrease from 3.57 to positive infinity. And those are the intervals of increase and decrease for this particular function. Next, we're interested in the local max value, or values, if there's more than one. So we're looking for the peaks of the graph, the high points. So we're going to have a local max here. Uh, the coordinate is about negative 5, 9.6, and then another local max right here. 
However, when they're asking specifically for the value, that means they're asking for the y values of the local maximum. So you could say something like this. We have a local max, the local max of, and then list the y value, that would be 9.6. So the local max is 9.6, but where does it occur? Then you could say it occurs at the point or the coordinate about negative 5 comma 9.6. So the coordinate is where the maximum occurs, but the actual local max value here, the local max value is 9.6, so it's asking for a y value. But then we have a second local max value. So our second local max, we would say we have a local max of about 3.6 or 3.55 if you included two decimals. And then again, where that occurs, it occurs at the point negative 3.57 comma positive 3.6. So those are my local max values. Now the absolute max value, that is the largest y value over the graph the graph's entire domain. So in this case, my absolute maximum point is going to be this high point. Therefore, my absolute max value is the y value of that, that coordinate. So in this case, the absolute maximum value is 9.6. That's the absolute max value. Now for local minimums, now you're looking for a low point on the graph. So we could say we have a local minimum value. In this case, that local minimum, here's my little low point on the graph. So here's the coordinate where the local minimum occurs. But again, we're looking for the y value. So the local minimum value there is this y value. So the local minimum value we have is about negative 0.7. So we have a local min value of negative 0.7 and then if you wanted to list where it occurs, you could, you would say it occurs at about, oh, negative 0 0.03 comma negative 0.7 is our local min value. Lastly, we have our absolute minimum. So this is looking for the lowest point on the graph. But in this case, because these arrows indicate that the graph continues down, in the downward direction forever, this graph never reaches a lowest point. So in this case, we do not have an absolute minimum value. We have none. Now we want to use the graph to solve f of x is less than or equal to zero. So rather than solving an inequality algebraically, we're using the graph to solve this inequality. So we need to understand exactly what this means. Remember, f of x is just a fancy way of writing y. So this is basically asking, where on this graph are your y values less than or equal to 0? In other words, where are those y values? Negative. And if the y values are negative, that means we would be down below the x-axis. So this is another way of asking, what parts of the graph lie below the x-axis? So it turns out I, I missed one. This little hump here also is below the x-axis. So there are three pieces of the graph that lie below the x-axis. So we're solving for x. Therefore, my answer is going to be the x-intervals that are these three red portions of the graph. So this first piece here, that piece of the graph is from negative infinity to the x-intercept, which is negative 7. And then we have to make a decision on whether we should include negative 7. But because I wanted the function to be less than or equal to, then we do want to include negative 7 because that's where the graph is equal to 0 or where the y values are equal to 0. So we're going to utilize a bracket. Then we'll move to this little inner portion here that's below the x-axis. And that's from x equals negative 1 to x equals positive 1. So there's my second interval. And then my last interval will be the far right-hand side of the graph that lies below the x-axis. And that's from positive 5 to the right, which would be positive infinity. So these would be the intervals, which are the solutions to this inequality. f of x is less than or equal to 0. 
part f, use the graph to solve f of x is greater than 2. So f of x, again, is the same as y. So we're asking what parts of the graph have y values that are greater than 2. So I like to draw a horizontal line here at y equals 2. Here's where the y values are equal to 2. And then we're interested in the y values being bigger than 2, greater than 2. So that would basically mean that we're looking for the portion of the graph that lies above the horizontal line y equals 2. So I'll shade in green here the parts of the graph that lie above this line y equals 2. We have a piece there and we have another piece here. There's two portions of the graph where the y values are bigger than 2. So my answer to this inequality, again these are x intervals, I'm going to have two intervals. The first interval is going to be the first piece here of the graph and so you have to give me the x value of that point. Now you might say that that point the x value looks like negative 7 but I would caution you about writing negative 7 only because on the previous problem when we asked for the zeros uh, earlier in this problem, you probably listed negative 7 as the 0 or the x-intercept. Therefore, the x value here can't also be negative 7 because then it would not be a function. So you can just estimate this x value then must be something slightly larger than negative 7. So maybe you'll write something like negative 6.9. I would accept negative 6.8, just some decimal that's slightly larger than negative 7. And then I'm going to use a parenthesis because the inequality says we want to be greater than 2, not equal to 2. And then we'll travel all the way over here to the other side of that little hump and give the x value there, and that looks to be like negative 2. So here's my first interval. And then my second interval picks up right here, and that looks like an x value of positive 2. And then that goes all the way to this value there. Once again, I hesitate writing down that this value, the x value here is 5. I know it looks like 5, but I think we listed. I think we listed 5 earlier as the x-intercept, so therefore this point here can't be 5 as well. It has to be a little bit smaller than 5, so I'll say 4.9. And once again, we're using parentheses because the inequality said it, we wanted to be greater than 2, not greater than or equal to 2. So these two intervals would be my solution to the inequality where f of x is greater than 2. End behavior. So there's two ways of writing end behavior. There's kind of a, an elementary way of writing it and then a more advanced mathematical way of writing it. So let's start with the elementary way of, of writing it. The end behavior is just asking what's happening on the far left of this graph. We call that the left behavior and what's happening on the far right of the graph. So for the left behavior, as we travel to the left of the graph, you'll notice that we have this arrow down. And that implies that my y values are going to be getting more and more negative. So if we were to write that out in words, you could just say that the left behavior of the graph is that it falls. This graph is falling to the left. In other words, it's pointing down. And likewise, on this particular graph, the right behavior is also that the graph is falling. So when you first learn about end behavior, you're probably allowed to write your answers just like this in words. But with more advanced math classes, it's important to know the notation. So when we use this word left, one way of saying that is we're talking about as x approaches negative infinity. And we use the arrow to indicate x is approaching negative infinity. So this is our symbol, which means we're traveling to the left on this graph. So as x approaches negative infinity, that's the left behavior, then our graph is falling. That means that our y values are also approaching negative infinity. So as x approaches negative infinity, y approaches negative infinity. That means that the left behavior of the graph, it is falling. Moving on to the right behavior of the graph, that's going to be as x approaches positive infinity. And since the y values are falling to the right as well, then y would approach negative infinity. So this is really the notation we want to strive for in our higher level math classes for end behavior.
And finally, is the function even, odd, or neither? And does it have any symmetry? So even functions can be folded across the y-axis, and you'll have a mirror image. This function does not have y-axis symmetry. You cannot fold it across the y-axis. Odd functions can be rotated 180 degrees, and this one also does not have that type of symmetry either. So this, this is a neither or a neither. This function is not even, nor is it odd. Therefore, this function has no type of symmetry. So it's not even, it's not an odd function, and it has no symmetry.